All right, friends. Any moment, any moment, without warning, Yeshua is going to break open that sky, and he's coming for his bride. He's coming to take the church. Are you ready to be that bride? Are you ready to make that commitment to love him unconditionally, to honor him, to respect him, to praise him, to worship him for all of eternity? No looking back. No few years down the line. Well, when I first became the bride of Christ, it was like the 4th of July. There were fireworks. There were sparks. There was an eternal flame that I thought would never burn out. But now I'm kind of used to Jesus. There's no turning back. God right now is looking at you and me, the potential bride for his son. And he knows far greater things than we could ever imagine. He knows us better than we know ourselves. It's time for a little prenuptial Christian counseling, marriage counseling for you, the potential bride. Let's take a look at what is going on in your personal life, in your personal uh, relationships now, right now, today. And let's take a look and see, are we really worthy of being the bride of Christ? So pull up your chair, grab your coffee, get your coffee. Now you may not agree with everything I have to say, and that's okay, but I'm going to bring you the truth. I'm going to bring you the living word. Uh, I am not judging anyone. I don't want you to think that. I am not passing judgment upon you. Um, and I'm not going to tickle your ears. That's one thing I will not do on this channel. I will just bring you the truth and I will not tickle your ears. I will tell it to you just like it is. All right. Are you ready for some Christian counseling, marriage counseling before Yeshua breaks open that sky? I think it's well needed for all of us. Um, let's take a look at what's going on in our own personal lives, in our personal relationships. Are you in a relationship with your spouse right now, but a non-committed relationship where you are acting out the role? And I'm not judging you. It's not for me to judge you as husband and wife, but one of you, either yourself or your spouse, um, has not made that commitment for whatever reason. You have not decided to go that extra step and make that commitment to one another in this relationship but you are playing house you are playing like a married couple you're doing everything a married couple does but this is how satan comes in satan not only wants to destroy the church he has infiltrated the church he wants to destroy the marriage he wants to defile the marriage bed he wants to um not only destroy your relationship and if you are married he wants to destroy your marriage he doesn't want you to become the bride of yeshua and that's for sure so if you're you are in a relationship uh, acting as husband and wife in the bedroom chamber doing everything a married couple does but you haven't made that commitment before god is that a sin that's not for me to judge that's not for me to judge but why what is the reason that you could not make that commitment, but you feel you can make a commitment to Yeshua, to honor him, to love him, to obey him, to respect him, to worship him, to praise him for all eternity. When you can't make that commitment in your own relationship, why are you in a relationship? Why are you playing house as if you are married when this union was not brought together before God? It's one thing you want to take a look at. And I'm not judging you, because many people today are acting out the role of a union that is not before God. For whatever reason, one or the other. You have to look at the, your, your, your spouse, your mate. Why have they not committed and made that commitment before God? It's so easy to walk away. Without a commitment, it's very easy to, after it doesn't even matter how many years, and children, but come into this relationship, this non-marriage union, um, to just get up and walk away. There is no commitment there. So we have to take a look at that. And you want to become the bride of Christ? And this goes to uh, 
uh, fellas, that goes for you, men and women as well. Look at your partner. Why is there no commitment there? And why are you staying in this relationship? Why are you allowing this to take place? Okay. Don't be mad at me. I'm just, I'm not going to tickle your ears. No, here we go. You are in a marriage. You are in a marriage. You have made that commitment before God. The no man, no man can um, come between. No one can tear apart this union. You made this commitment. You took your vows before God. Now, when you first met, it was the 4th of July. The entire world stood still. Time stood still when you looked into uh, the eyes of your partner for life. For, it's a life commitment. It was like the 4th of July. But as time went on, you got accustomed to one, of, one another. You found out that neither of you are perfect. Your, your husband and your wife certainly is not perfect. Only God is perfect. You found out that they don't um, pick up after themselves. They don't help out around the house. Um, they're leaving their dirty clothes laying around for you to pick up. You um, find out that uh, they burp, they belch, and they fart. So now they are not as attractive to you as they once were in the very beginning because you didn't know all their faults. So now you have children in this marriage, this union before God. Now, you're looking at your husband or you're looking at your wife and all their faults and all their likes and all their dislikes and a lot of things you didn't really get to know about them, but it took, it took time, it took years. And they're not just not as attractive to you as they were, even though you've made this commitment. And you're not sure if you want to even stay in this relationship because uh, now you've heard them burp, heard them belch, you heard them fart. They've got their dirty socks all over the place. They won't cut the grass. They won't help out. But you have children in this marriage, in this union. Now, when you first have that child, that baby, you hold it in your arms. and Oh, what a new experience. You just love this baby. You never want to let go. But you've seen this baby's dirty diaper you've changed its diaper you've looked at its poo and as this child grows you see the child uh, just really acting out in anger terrible twos their toys are all over the floor their clothes are all over as they grow a little bit older into their teenagers are very defiant they back talk uh they won't clean their room they want to stay out all hours of the night, and you've got to set down some foundations. But do you find them less attractive? Has that spark from the time you held them as a newborn baby, has that wore off? No. You, Satan will come into the marriage, and into the marriage chamber, the marriage bedroom, every aspect of the marriage, and try to tear it down and destroy it. Now you don't find your husband or your wife as attractive because you've seen them leave their clothes laying around. You've seen their faults, that they are not like Jesus. They are not perfect. But neither are you. So you're now you're thinking, maybe the grass is greener over there on the other side. Maybe I just don't love this person anymore. You've looked at your child. You've changed their dirty diaper. You've heard them belch, burp, and fart, leave their clothes around, terrible twos, acting defiant, acting out against you. Do you ever say to yourself, uh, I think I want to leave this child. I don't think I love this child anymore. Of course not. You never do. There are a lot of things we have to look at when we uh, are to consider ourselves worthy to be the bride. Let me take you to some scripture real quick. I don't want to keep it too long, but this is so, so important. Ephesians uh, chapter 5, verse 22 through 33. This is so important because a lot of times husbands or wives uh, may find that the grass is greener on the other side of the road. They look at their own grass and, well, it was a beautiful lawn at one time when we first met, but now there's a lot of weeds, there's a lot of tears, there's a lot of crabgrass. 
but over there it looks just so attractive. Look how nicely that grass is. So you, you leave uh, your home and you climb over that fence only to find out, yes, the grass looks beautiful. But if you take a real close look, there's a lot of weeds, there's a lot of tares, there's a lot of crabgrass. The grass isn't always greener on the other side of that fence. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. You never even think about you seen all the faults of your child of falling out of love with your child. Why would you even consider it against your husband or your wife? Consider falling out of love and leaving the marriage that Christ has brought you together as the body and he is the head. You become when you become married, you become one. One for life. It's a promise, a vow made before God, before the living God. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. And I'm going to say this next part just for a moment here. It's a commitment, a promise, a vow for eternity, for life. The, the two of you joined together. It took a lot of years for you to learn one another. You have to get that flame. You have to have them fireworks. You have to have that feeling like a kid at Christmas. You have to have that renewed. Satan wants to tear apart your marriage. He doesn't like commitment to God. He wants to come in and break up your family through divorce. He wants to tear your children apart, tear their little hearts apart. And it is Satan who is making you think the grass is greener on the other side or you just don't love your husband or your wife any longer. He wants to tear this marriage union down because it's a union before God. And he is the enemy. And he wants to destroy this and destroy your family. And don't let him do this. Don't let him do this. Now, I'm going to ask you something because now you have children involved and uh, you've seen all their faults their dirty diapers their messy rooms their defiant teenagers their terrible twos um, but would you ever contemplate leaving your children uh, it's not as exciting as when they were a newborn baby I held them in my arms all oh, the feeling I got to really know them now they're not perfect either uh, they have their faults they have their downfalls there are a lot of a child is a lot of work, costing me a lot of money. I don't think I love them anymore. You never even have that thought enter your mind that you not you don't love your children anymore. Let me ask you: Do you place your child or your children on a pedestal over your husband or over your wife? If it came down to it, and you had to make a choice between your husband or your wife or your child, who are you going to choose? Nine times out of ten, parents will tell me, oh, I'm going to choose my child. Let me take you back to Ephesians. Um, bear with me. So important. Ephesians 5, verse 31. Listen carefully, church. For this reason, a man shall leave. Amen. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. 
Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular show love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother. The husband is the head of the wife. You cannot put your child ahead of your husband. You become one flesh or your wife. You are to love your child unconditionally. But no, it is a commandment of God. It is God's desire for that child one day to leave home, to leave you and start their own life, to um, take upon themselves a wife or a husband. And for that union, to be sanctified under God and they become one flesh as you and your husband are. You have to have the knowledge of knowing that through all the years, all the raising of your children and your love them unconditionally, that you are going to have to let them go. But you are to never put them ahead of your husband or your wife because you are going to let them go. That's what God commands. One day they are going to leave and start their own life and have their own union before God. But you are to never let your spouse go. And can you make that commitment uh, with Yeshua as the bride of Christ? Now I want to talk about uh, marriage when there are stepchildren involved. And you are to love them as you love your own children. A lot of people join together and the husband has uh, a few children from uh, a previous marriage and the wife has a couple of children from her previous marriage and they become one family. You can never let this come between your marriage. You are to treat all the children the same. Give them all the same love. All the same uh, nourishing words of love and encouragement when you raise these children together. You can't consider, well, that's not my child, that's his child or her child, and treat them differently. That is wrong. That is dangerous. That is damaging. And don't put your stepchildren ahead of your husband. They are going to leave you one day. It's what God desires. They are going to leave and they are going to get married, stay out of their marriage. They are going to become one flesh. Don't butt in. Spend that time loving your husband. I hope this has been helpful. Now, I want you to take a look at your own relationships, your own life, your own husband, your own wife, your own uh, situation that you're in. Are you in a committed relationship? Have you made that vow before God? Have you made that promise? Are you going to keep that promise? If you can't keep it in your own relationship, Satan doesn't want you to keep it. Are you going to keep it with Yeshua? Hope this has been helpful. Leave me comments. I love you. God bless. And he is coming. The king is coming. He's going to break open the sky. And I believe maybe, maybe we are just now ready. God bless. I love you.